The East Los Angeles Library first opened on May 1st, 1923, and has been serving the community of East Los Angeles ever since. However, the library's physical location has changed five times. In September of 2004, with funding from the LA County Board of Supervisors, a brand new 26,000 square foot building opened to the public. It was to be the center of East Los Angeles community. It was designed to reflect that community and it was with input from the community that artist Jose Antonio Aguirre was chosen to create the mural which welcomed everyone into the library. Today we will speak with the artist and discover the wonderful history behind this great work. Well, Jose Antonio, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I wanted to first say that your mural is beloved in this community. People spend a long time looking at it and um, they're just always talking about it and it's really a very special part of our library. Um, well, thank you, Daniel. It's, a, it's an honor to be here and also to have been so fortunate to be able to do that work of art for our community and for this library. Yes. Um, just to give context, let's, can you talk a little bit about how you started in art or how, how, what your life path was? To... Yes, uh, you know, actually I was born and raised in Mexico City. And uh, I was not an artist who knew he wanted to be an artist, you know, of an early age. I, you know, I'm not a prodigy or anything like that. Uh, but uh, I, I can tell you that I was exposed to the masters. And actually it's interesting because my first involvement in art was thinking I wanted to be an architect or because of the drawing aspect of it. But then I went into music. Mm. Actually, I studied music uh, uh, at the University of Mexico, uh, composition and uh, uh, classical guitar for a while. And that's how I came to the United States. Just to visit uh, Chicago, to be able to see a rock and roll concert, buy an electric guitar, you know, and, uh, and then things happen because uh, at one point I said, well, if I stay, I can uh, buy my guitar, you know, if I work for a little bit, I can buy the guitar and then go back to Mexico and continue with my career. And then my father said, well, have you looked into the possibility to study in the United States? Because at that time, the music education, and we're talking in the 1970s, you know, 76, 77, it was about 50 to 30 years behind the United States and Europe. Mm. So you really wanted to have a serious career in music beyond being playing as a mariachi or piano bar, you know, uh, and it's not putting them down. In reality, you had to go to, to leave the, the country, either find a scholarship or if your family was wealthy or had, the, you know, you had a patron, that was the, the choice. Since I was in Chicago, I, I decided to, to look into that. And I actually enrolled in the, in the, in the school, uh, the American Conservatory in, in Chicago for a semester. And that's when I discovered art. How did I discover art? Because the school was across the street from the uh, Art Institute of Chicago, from the museum. You know, so one day that our one class was canceled, I, I, I had to kill my the time and and I remember I was looking at the lions at the entrance and then I look at the sign that they say this today is free it's so Thursdays are free so oh this is great you know being a poor student you know I couldn't afford to pay to enter into the museum so I took advantage of that and it blew my mind mm -hmm. it blew my mind because I was able to see then the European masters you know the impressionists. Lutrec, Van Gogh, uh, uh, you know, you name it, uh, Gauguin, and Chicago, and then also actually they had the Picassos, the Monets, uh, and, and, and it was a, a, an area where they had some of the Mexican art, uh, you know, they had uh, Frida Kahlo, Asiqueiros, they had Diego Rivera. So that blew my mind, that blew my mind. And uh, went back to, to, to school, but then my, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really, 
continue, I couldn't concentrate, you know, I had this bug. And then finally I say, okay, I, I got it. You know, my talent really is in, in, in the visual arts. So that's, that's how more or less I started uh, really finding my path. And I'm talking that I was working in a restaurant. I was working for this restaurant called La Margarita. And the owner of the restaurant, Mr. Dovalina, also had the, the only weekly new Spanish newspaper in town. And he would bring the copies into the restaurant. And in one of them, I suddenly saw an article about Kazaslan and sponsoring this program with the CIDA program in those years, doing murals in Pilsen, which will be the equivalent to East Los Angeles, you know, the Pilsen neighborhood. So I went and talked to Mr. Dovalina. I said, you know, I really want to get involved with this, in this, with these people. So he sent me to talk to so and so, and I ended up doing my first mural. And like I said, by then I had already enrolled into the, the the Art Institute, the School of the Art Institute, and uh, went into the direction that I am at now. Well, it's a fascinating story, and it brings us up to, well, to the time of doing the mural. Can you just tell us, tell us all about the mural? Well, you know, it was interesting. I think it was around the year 2002 that I heard at Selkhub Graphics that it was going to be an artist call to do a mural for the new library. You know, uh, and uh, uh, somehow they, 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 they put it on, at that time it was not online. I think that it was actually some, some documents that had uh, like flyers, some you flyers, know, yeah. in, at Cell Help. And then there were some meetings. We had a meeting, a community meeting there and here at the old, uh, now the Civic Center, you know, uh, the old library. And, and it was interesting because in, that, in those meetings, it's like the community was expressing what they wanted to see, you know. So the way it worked is I had to, 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 to present an idea, you know, or my credentials somehow. And uh, we were three artists who were selected finally to do the uh, proposals. One was Roberto Delgado, Tito Delgado, and the other one, Paul Botello, the brother of David Botello from East Los Street Skippers and myself. We, I remember we went to see the architect at his offices in Glendale, and uh, we look uh, at the, at the uh, maquette, and uh, that's when they told us it was going to be the two towers, you know, in a circular form, semi-circular form. And I said, this is very challenging, you know. But what was challenging uh, the most was actually the initial budget for the project. Because it was these huge, beautiful towers with this uh, not much money, and, and you have to be very creative, right? So here I am thinking, how am I going to do? And at one point, I think all of us were thinking, the only way to do it, even if you're going to paint them with a brush, is gonna have to be just sections. But in my concept, I immediately say, I wanna have something going from the top, from the outside to the inside, you know. And uh, I, I, I did create it an, an, uh, a proposal that kind of was speaking about the cultural aspects of the community, you know. I, I could sense that they wanted to see some of the heroes, you know, and also some of the history. And uh, so I, I, I did that initial proposal, which actually was very liked. And I was selected. I mean, I was surprised because, I mean, the initial consensus was that I didn't have a, a good chance to, to get it, you know. Who was in, make, involved in making the decision to? It was an uh, it was a, a art uh, committee that was, uh, uh, if I recall, it had some representation from the district, somebody from the district, from supervisors, Molina office, you know. Uh, I, I think the architect, the firm of architects also had a representation. Uh, some, I'm not sure if they were, they probably were some artists and, and the community, some members of the community, you know. I, uh, to be honest with you, I don't recall how many of them, there must be somewhere in the record who were yeah. in the committee, you know. Especially because I remember that self-help was very close involved in the process. And, and what is the 
importance of self-help in the East Los Angeles community? Well, self-help is actually the oldest organization of uh, the arts organization uh, founded by Sister Karen Bocalero and, and two Mexican artists, Carlos Bueno and Antonio Ibáñez in the early 70s. You know, and the interesting thing about this organization is that they concentrated in bringing the Mexican aspect culture into that community. Because when they did create the, 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 the organization, the consensus was is that the kids at that time, and now are adults and probably even grandparents, some of them, were not really too familiar with the Mexican culture. You know, mm -hmm. That's when you see this explosion of the murals and bringing a lot of the of the pre-Hispanic elements and some of the revolution, you know, heroes, you know, which actually was very interesting, you know, when I worked in my concept, because I always started thinking, okay, you know, are we going to go back to what has been done since the 1970s to, and that we're talking already the 21st century, right? The beginning of the 21st century. So self-help somehow was able to to establish a voice for the local artists to, to, to not just express themselves, but also to have a contact with what's the world of art. Somehow they were able to cross the river, you know, and open the doors for many, many artists. I mean, among them, Patsy Valdez, uh, Alfredo de Batuc. Uh, I, mean, the, uh, I mean, Frank Romero was working already with Los Four. But you have Margaret Garcia, Eloy Torres, even myself, you know, I mean, there were several artists who, who were able to have a, a different experience, you know, and, 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 and have the opportunity to, to work in a high level of professionalism in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, in the arts. That's important of, uh, of self-help in that sense. So obviously when they were thinking, and you know, so, uh, Gloria Molina, Supervisor Molina likes the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was kind of a logical move. And we had had, actually, you know, I think that the first con connection with self help was because we did a mural, the one that is on the, on, uh, over uh, Third Street, on the old library, now the oh, Civic yeah. Center, that tile mural. She gave us the money to, uh, to do it, you know, as a summer program. And... Uh, I think she got, was very pleased with the result. Mm -hmm. And from there, that connection was logical. You know, we want to do, uh, how are we gonna talk to you? Because that's one of the things she wanted, that the artists to be selected had to be from the community, somehow, you know, or connected to, to, to so she wanted to have a Latino, in this case, a Chicano artist or Mexican American artist to do it, you know, and, and that's, that's how they get involved. And that's how then I learned about it. I do my presentation. I'm fortunate enough to, to get the selection. How it started, you know. And from there I started evolving the initial concept of the elements into what we have now, you know. Because at one point uh, I had the idea of the wings. I had the idea of having maybe cicadas, maybe having a, uh, one of the walls, what I call the West Wall, mostly was dedicated to uh, the history, you know, the, because that was one of the things I expressed. So you, when you start looking into East LA, you say, wait a minute, you know, we have Jewish, we have the Italians, we have the Armenians, we have the Japanese, we have the Mexicans, the Chinese, you know, and so on, on you know, without talking about the Native American, Tongwa, mm. Tongwa, you know, so I say, I was kind of working some designs on that, and at one point it was like, you know what, I think we really need to talk about what is East LA now, how this happens. So I start thinking and through my research, which actually a lot of my research came from the Chicano Resource Center, you know, uh, I'm getting to the conclusion says, you know, the key moment in history was the uh, Second World War, the Sleepy Lagoon riots. That's what really makes the difference, you know. That injustice makes the difference. And I remember through the research of Val, Edward Roy Val mentioning, until we get a representation in the system, until we get elected into office, some of us, nothing is gonna change. 
And I remember he ran the first time, he didn't make it, but then he made it. And that started making the big change. So I said, okay, I'm gonna concentrate from the 19, you know, from that period to now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to look for people who are important to this community. And of course, at the moment, I'm thinking, am I going to put again Zapata and Hidalgo, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, no, let's wait a minute. Let's talk about who are the new heroes. You know? mm-hmm. And then somebody asked me, why you have cicadas there? I said, well, because cicadas was the main inspiration for Chicano artists. But, uh, but it created the uh, inspiration, you know, so that's why you have cicadas, that's why Sister Karen is there because of what we talked about self-help graphics. And then I started talking, okay, what's the major hero? Of course, Cesar Chavez, mm-hmm. Dolores Huerta, you know, we needed to put that. And then I put uh, uh, um, Ruben Salazar because also the same thing. Here you have an individual who was the main voice for justice using, you know, the press mm-hmm. and until he is... He, killed at, uh, at the moratorium, you know. So I wanted these young kids or the, the community to realize that they were already heroes beyond the ones that we were always glorifying, you know. And, uh, and, and, and then in the other world, I say, okay, who are the present ones? Who are the inspirations, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, for example, I put Oscar de la Hoya, you know, and somebody says, why? Because he's a successful boxer who's making millions when his fights, I say, no. Because you don't know, understand that this kid was a statistic in one of the alleys of East LA. And his father, who was an amateur boxer in Mexico City, decided to teach him boxing so he could defend himself against the, the gangs. Like you could stop bullets in with your fists, right? But interestingly, no, it brought him into a different direction. And among that, to me, what is really important is he going to, his mother was already bedridden with cancer, you know, uh, close to dying. And he goes and tells his mother, mom, I'm gonna bring you back the gold medal from Barcelona, from the Olympics, which he did. Mm-hmm. See, that's what is important to me. It's important that he put also a gymnasium donated, uh, a gym in, for the kids, to, to stay out of the streets without bragging, this is Oscar de la Hoya's even. Or even, you know, the wing at the White Memorial Hospital. The, 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 it doesn't, the, the, donated all these million dollars for the cancer wing, and it does, it's not the name of his mother, you know? It's, it's like he just has done certain things very quietly. You know? And then that's why we have, uh, Gloria Molina, not because she was the, the patron of, uh, of the mural or the library, because she was the first Chicana to be elected to office. It's an inspiration to all these young girls, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you have Antonio Hernandez for the legal work. And of course, I had to put Eddie uh, almost, you know, James Edward almost because he was born here, mayor actor, you know, who really, uh, I mean, went across the river, you know, for success, and Anthony Queen. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was the idea, I said, look at who were, who were the people who were here mm-hmm. and what they have done, and you can do the same or more, you know. That was the, the, the idea we, with the mural. So, you know, the mural has that narrative of who are the, in, the, in, the, in the East Wall when you enter, you know, those heroes like Cesar Chavez, Jose Cesar Chavez, and then you have the other side where we have uh, Anthony Quinn or Oscar or uh, uh, Gloria Molina. You know? And again, in terms of the composition, it was to make it dynamic. Here I'm using a very stiff or hard material, although glass is liquid. You know, in principle, the glass is liquid. Yeah, you know, but we all think that it's rigid. No, but did you grab a, a, big, a long piece of glass, you will see that it starts bending, you know, because that, it, it, the molecular structure is liquid. Mm. That's the reason why, you know, and, uh, but that, those little pieces of glass, so to me, it's how I'm going to activate this space. And I thought about the cicadas principles of uh, using the multi-point perspective, which actually was kind of breaking into this, uh, 
geometrical pattern, you know, and try to connect it to the two towers somehow in that composition, plus having these elements. And of course, when you look at the uh, at the towers, I mean at the uh, at the geometrical aspect, they're very busy, very colorful. So that's when I had to come to the conclusion: say, okay, you know what? We have beautiful color pattern as a background, and when we put the figures, if they're in color, they're gonna get lost. So I came up with this idea, kind of connecting also with contemporary art, you know, it's kind of thinking, okay, maybe a Warholian approach, mm -hmm. kind of monochromatic, putting certain colors, you know, so they really come out, you know, or cinematic in that sense from the beginning of the 19th century, you know, which actually was another principle that Cato's was using, you know, the cinematic approach was very important in, in, in his work. So, you know, I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to connect, uh, actually, from my roots in, in Mexico to my experience here in the United States and to expand that into the next generations. So, you know, I was thinking, here we had two towers. Let's talk about duality. Let's talk about that connection day and night, you know, light and dark. So for me, I say, okay, I'm gonna use a lighter blue in the east tower and then a dark blue in the other one. In the center, with this, uh, 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 talking with the architects, we did a composition. Just like, I, that one, we could say, was more ornamental about having the sun and the moon. That's how you connect, you know? So you can see that when they are, there's like a, in the center part is a, a marriage between these shapes that represent the sun and the moon, and then they walk out into the, 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 the from the doors and connect into, you know, either the, 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 the entrances and in the, you can call it the park, you know. But that was the idea, you know, that since you're coming into the library from either end, from the lake or from uh, the parking lot, you were seeing these shapes that were leading you into the mural and as you enter, the first two images that unite the mural, I think, no, I don't think, are the angel. Mm -hmm. This is this angel, which actually is a very interesting story too with those angels. So when I started thinking, of course, it's Los Angeles, right? The angels. Mm -hmm. And those angels are, have comp uh, are, are an integration of kind of some witch all symbology on my, you know, that I transform. And part of my work on my faces, you know, more of my personal sketches. But I wanted to have that angel that is welcoming you, and I decided to use the uh, universal man of Da Vinci, mm -hmm. you know, to give the welcome. And the angel is standing with these hands, these open hands, which actually are part of one of the murals of Cicados. Mm -hmm. I appropriated the, 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 the hands of uh, the, 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 the last mural of Cicados, but actually, it's not even that, you know, he also did it in one of his paintings in Mexico City at the Polyforum, you know. So it's like the hands are welcoming you with this uh, Olin shape, you know, which is the symbol for movement. And I wanted to talk about, in, in a conceptual way, about movement in many ways. The movement of the mind, the movement of, uh, of, of a community to not just survive, but to grow. And actually, the actual movement of the air, you know, we are in a seismic mm -hmm. place, you know. So, yes, it's movement in different levels, but mostly it's about the library, you know. The library is moving your mind, right, into knowledge, into mm -hmm. different directions. So I wanted to have that as a, as, a, as, a, as a welcoming angel, and then you have all the heroes around it. And the, and the West uh, Tower is the same idea. Mm -hmm. But the angel, if you really look into it, the angel is living. What you look is at the back of the angel. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I wanted to make a statement. I say, for our kids, it still is a reality. You're gonna have to cross the river. I mean, it's like we coming from the south, crossing the river, right, mm -hmm. or the border. We have to cross the river, right? You have to go to the west side mm -hmm. to really conquer this town, or establish something in this town. And then you can come back. You're, but you're gonna do it in different ways, you know. I mean, uh, I mean, we really think in terms of our, some of our uh, uh, 
leaders went to school to UCLA or they going to U or they went to USC, you know, Loyola, etc. You know, so that was the thing I say, you know, kids, okay, you're gonna have to leave home, cross to the other side, assimilate all this experience, and then bring it back. And, and that was the idea, say, yeah, you know, you cannot forget your roots, which is the same thing I'm doing. Yes, I live in the United States, I live in Los Angeles, but I'm still connected to my roots, which is actually brings into, into uh, you know, the, to mention the, 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 the situation, how, why I decided also to take over the Mexican Cultural Institute of Los Angeles mm -hmm. as a volunteer executive director to save it, you know, mm -hmm. and to have this collaboration with different organizations or, or places to continue presenting the Mexican and Chicano culture or Mexican-American. I mean, we have all these labels, but the, mainly the Mexican root to, to, to our, not just our community, but other communities, you know, mm -hmm. but in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, to really present what is not known. The unknown Mexico, I call it, you know, when somebody's telling me, what are you doing here? I'm trying to show you the unknown Mexico. Just so what you mean, I say, so let's put it this way. If am I going to do a uh, festival of mariachi, I will not play, or I will ask them not to play El Son de la Negra or La Viquina. Beautiful pieces, but that's what everybody plays everywhere, yeah. you know. Yeah. Let's present the other ones that we don't, the people don't know. Mm -hmm. Not even our own, our own people knows. The idea is to expand, you know, we're not limited to this sample mm -hmm. is such a richness and that's what i think that is the challenge right now you know in that sense and that's why we have the angel sign saying cross the border or not cross the river you know go in the other side let's see what we learn let's see what we assimilate let's see what we can take and bring back and vice versa what we can get them there mm -hmm. to to expand oh the uh, outside oh yes the beautiful the face and the DNA part. You know, and uh, okay, going back. So in terms of the composition, we have talked about the, 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 the history or, or the narrative that we have inside the towers. But when you look at the murals, especially the, from the parking lot, you are able to see that it cont continues on top, you know, on uh, both sides. Unfortunately, for the West Tower, you cannot see it unless you're very far away <laughs> in the park or from the inside because since we have uh, you know the uh, the light uh, skylight, yeah. the skylight that you and, and actually that's another thing I want to bring into you know when you're really looking through the skylight you will see that that geometric composition connects in the center and continues to the walls on on the outside oh. in the east wall I decided to put actually the essence of a book. Somehow the architect had ambition to have that void of a square that was part of my composition. Oh. So that's what I play with, put it on a tube, and then the idea of the book uh, around it, you know, and, 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 and as you see, you can see the wings, mm -hmm. somehow the shape of the wings. And in one end, I put the face, a face, mm -hmm. which is actually the map, of the DNA map projected into this face. Yeah. You know. Talking about our humanity, and 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 at that point it was the, the most exact map that they ever had, and it's accurate. You know, it's not that I put random colors. It actually comes from a from a from a study that they did, and I found, and I decided to reproduce that with the difference of the face. If you when you look at it, people say, "Well, it's a gray face." Mm -hmm. Well, it's not a brown face. You know, we're people of color. Or, I said, "Well, we're mestizo." You know, to start with. But it was on purpose because I didn't want it to have it saying, oh, he did a white or he did a, yeah. a brown or he did a blue or he did a pink, you know? No, I say, you know, the, 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 the gray actually is part of the, how they did portraits and it still is a technique to paint a portrait. You do it with a called grise, it comes from the Renaissance, you know, or Verdacho, which is with a green. And what they do that is because somehow, when some artists discovered and when you put that as the base, of the skin tone color, it really works. After you do the gray, then you can put whatever colors of the skin you want, and it somehow really blends and, you know, so that was the first principle. 
And the other one was in the eyes gold, because I think humanity is gold, you know, in that oh. sense. And and I say the same thing, you know, if I put blue eyes, if I put brown eyes, if I put green eyes, you know, somehow it's gonna identify, it's gonna take the universi- universality away. And I want it to be like, hey, we are universal. And the other side, you see a ship uh, going to a, going to what I call this this shape of a ship going to a black hole idea mm-hmm. and 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 what's that point I say I, I I honestly believe that our technology has to take us mm-hmm. into a different level you know? maybe we can start dreaming about the Star Trek and all that you know mm-hmm. <laughs> in a sense I think that that's what it is especially looking at the situation of the planet is no doubt to me that the survival of humanity is going to have to be leaving the planet again. You're going to have to leave home. You have your roots here, but we have to spend. And uh, that was the point, you know. How, mm-hmm. how are we going to do that? Learning, you know, through the learning and experimenting and discovering is the only way we can do it. And especially when you look into the climate change situation, you know, it's really, a bit, and of course people are saying, are you going to waste all these billions of dollars to go to Mars? Mm-hmm. Well, yes, and you can say it's a waste. No, it is giving us other options. Mm-hmm. So that's the idea that the mural somehow can bring you into some, some challenges. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I've been thinking that would be great is to have a bar core, you know, that little new bar core that is like a mosaic. Mm-hmm. where people can connect their phone and then go into all this history. Mm-hmm. That would be this. fantastic. Yeah, you know? that okay. it's yes. Just, well, that's a fascinating story for the, the mural. I'm a little, um, I, you know, so much went into the thinking of it and, and creating. Yes. And uh, again, it's a beautiful piece of the library and people love it. So just real quick, what, what are you up to now? What are you doing? I just came back from Tijuana because I was elected to be part of the the first triennial of Tijuana for the for, for, for art. Uh, it was a fantastic thing. I mean, it still is a fantastic thing because I expanded my idea of muralism into integrating dig- digital glass, glass painting, drawing with electronic. Uh, component of music and, and video. You know, it's like a portable mural. We are 160 artists from 14 countries participating on that one. So that one is a, uh, it opens on Friday and it's a great one. It was a great experience. And on top of that, I'm replacing the uh, sculptures on Bali Boulevard. You know, I have nine sculptures there also talking about how I connect with the community, honoring our heroes, you know, mm-hmm. made of limestone. The idea was to rescue the, 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 the Stella concept, you know, from the Mesoamerican mm-hmm. into a new, into the 21st century, you mm-hmm. know. So I have uh, one dedicated to Carlos Amaraz, one to Lalo Guerrero, Lupe Vélez, mm-hmm. Vicky Carr, uh, Eddie Cano, and Shifra Goldman. And people tell me, why is she Frank Goldman? She's Jewish and, you know, she's, she's gringa. I say, no, you are forgetting. Shifra was the, 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 the scholar who really put Latino and Chicano art on the map in that academic level. Mm. You know, if, and besides that, she was the one who saved the Chiquitos mural. She started advocating for with Cicados, Cicado was alive in the late 60s, early 70s, before he passed away, of doing or bringing back the Olvera Street mural, you know. And, and somehow we can say that the mural ha- was rescued because of those efforts that they did 50 years ago. That's one, and the other one I'm doing a, a monument for, uh, for uh, Monrovia, for the city of Monrovia, which is dedicated to uh, Felix Gutierrez mm-hmm. and Francisco Gutierrez. These are uh, Mexicanos. We can go even back, you know. My understanding is that uh, Francisco 
grew up at San, the San, San Gabriel Mission. Mm -hmm. You know, that's as far as they go. Uh, and uh, he was the he was the one who put all the pour all the concrete in the streets of Monrovia. Mm -hmm. But the main thing he did the plunge, you know. And his son Felix, who became an artist and a publisher of, of the Voice of the Mexico. Mm -hmm. No, uh, he, and actually I think he was a professor in at, at the school across the street. Uh, he uh, he advocated a lot for the or the nouns. It was like the pre pre uh, Ruben Salazar journalist, oh, okay. you know, denouncing the injustice. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was talking about the plunge is because at that time, we're talking in the thirties, you know, even though his father had poor dad, they were not able, all these kids of color in Monrovia were just allowed to go on Saturday to take a swim. Because on Sunday, they will empty the pool, clean it, and then from Monday to Friday, it was all the white privileged mm -hmm. community population who will enjoy the pool, and then that weekend was their their oh. chance. You know, so he he was uh, uh, someone who was uh, protesting about those, this kind of injustices, and somehow the city of Monrovia now is taking uh, notice of who are their, also their sons, you know, the privileged sons and daughters who have done something and who have not been recognized because they were people of color. So that's what I have in my hands right now. Mm -hmm. Besides thinking how we can get a mosaic, replace that uh, painted floor with this real mosaic and really can bring the, the mural into a full completion. Well, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to enjoy your mural for a very long time. And uh, we're so happy to have you here to talk to us. No, thank you, Daniel. And as a matter of fact, as a closing point, I will say that, yes, I think that that mural is going to be enjoyed for a very long time because talking to an architect on one, in one of the meetings, as I say, what's going to happen if we get the big one? Mm -hmm. He said, Jose Antonio, very likely all the library is going to go down. But those towers, those towers, are because they've been built so strongly, mm. you know, it's, it's, I said, I assure you, I mean, you're talking only they drop a bump in there, nothing is going to happen there. So I'm very fortunate to be able, have been able to do this. And in terms of challenges, well, you know, I'm looking for a similar challenge. Mm. I want another space like that and see what we can do either here in California or Mexico, I don't know where, but I'm still pushing the, the brush. Actually, no, we'll say the mosaics. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm.